Sinister 2 Short Movie Review A young mother, Courtney, and her two twin boys, Zach and Dylan, move into a rural house where something horrible has happened. The first movie's deputy is further investigating the events of the first one, and he finds that there might be there might be a connection between Courtney and the his investigation and the the house that Courtney and her boys now live in. This is one of the horror sequels that figures that what the first one did worked for that. So rather than trying to do it again, let's go in a different direction. Where the first one was the grown man were trying to find out what happened with these missing families, this one, with that mystery having been cleared up in the first one, this one builds on that instead, switching the focus from the father whose children might be in danger to one of the children. And just as in the first, we, the audience, sit and watch home movies that become something else entirely. This is very effective. The there are things it does not do as well as the first. The movies themselves cross the the line into being just too too gruesome and gross, really, to be particularly scary. And the oh yes, Bugul himself is not as scary as the appearances of him are not as scary as those of the first. But beyond that, this does a lot of things that the first didn't do. And it's not that the first was worse in these areas, it's just that we've had the first, now let's see something else. Where the first was very much this one man and his family is there, but he is kind of burying himself in his work, trying to investigate this case. This is very much from the perspective of one of the twin boys, and we are constantly seeing him interact with both his brother and their mother. And it's, yeah, it's, it's thus a very different experience, yet very clearly set in the same world. And it does follow the same rules, as well as adding a few of, yes, a few additional ones. The sound is still what drives a lot of the scares, with loud noises, complete silence, and just good use of sound effects, really crafting a lot of the scares. And this retains a lot of this feel of 80s John Carpenter, with Prince of Darkness and The Thing and such in this sense of isolation and in, in this case it's not so much personal isolation as it is isolation from the rest of the world. The The house that the family lives in, in is this abandoned rural home. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, the link is in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.